Turning Stone finished last week, raced a 9-9 ball, 25,000 added, with a handful of world-class players and top regional players from Northeast, U.S., and Canada. Typical of open tournaments, there's a wide range of Fargo ratings of the entrance. If we look at the top third of the field, we see ratings that are more or less 650 and higher. The middle third of the field has roughly ratings between 600 and 650. In the bottom third of the field has ratings under 600, pretty much split between upper 500s, lower 500s, and under 500. Of course, better players earn more of the over $40,000 in prize money, but you might be surprised at the degree to which that's true. The bottom two-thirds of the field collectively earn the orange sliver here, and the top third of the field earn the, the rest, the blue part. The event was won by the highest rated player in the field, Shane Bambona. Alex Kazakis got second, James Aranis got third, Billy Thorpe got fourth, Miesko Fortunski and Jason Shaw got fifth, sixth, Conrad Justison and Jeremy Sose got seventh, eighth. This accounts for about two thirds of the prize fund. If we go back to thinking about the whole field of 128 players, we can imagine individual race to nine matches between any two players. For instance, if these two play, their ratings are close to one another and their match would be expected to be about equally likely to go either way. Same thing if these two played. If there's a gap between the two players of, let's say, like 50 points shown here, some people say, well, Fargo Ray predicts the higher rated player wins the match. We don't see it that way. We don't talk like that. We predict both players win the match. We just predict the higher rated player has a higher likelihood of winning the match. Meaning if they played this match 30 times, the lower rated player would probably win it about seven or eight times. So the lower rated player not winning the match here doesn't make Fargo ratings wrong. What would make Fargo ratings wrong is this match happening many times and the ratio of wins not fitting our prediction. We see a different 50 point gap like the green one shown here as behaving the same way. So if we look at all the matches that by chance happened in this tournament and lump together the ones that have a similar rating difference, we can look at them statistically. So here's what I'm going to do. I haven't done it yet, so I don't know what the results are going to look like. I'm going to fire up the Fargo Rate mobile app. I'm going to find the rating gap. Instead of using 50 points, I'm going to find the rating gap that makes 9 to 6 an even proposition, 50-50. Then we're going to find all the matches from this tournament, Turning Stone, that had a rating gap close to that and ask two questions about them. First, did the lower rated player win the match about the expected number of times? Second. When we average over several matches, did the lower rated player get to around six, like we would expect? Now, I haven't done this yet, so I don't know what the results are going to look like. If the results are terrible, I might be tempted to not share it with the world. Uh, I like to think that I won't do that, that I'd share it either way. But anyway, here goes. So here's the answer to the first question. When one player goes to nine and the other player goes to six, and there's 61 points separating them, that's a 50-50 proposition. So now we want to plug in a 61-point gap for an even race to 9 and see what the odds are. That's this one. When both players go to 9 and there's a 61-point rating gap, the higher-rated player is expected to win about 80% of the matches. There were 44 matches that had a 61-point rating gap with a 10-point leeway. Here are the 7 that were won by the lower-rated player. You may recognize matches that people were talked about as uh, upsets. Uh, for instance, Jeremy Sose beating James Aranis here, uh, or Billy Thorpe beating Jason Shaw, or Demi Gelatis beating John Mora. The usual situation, though, is that the higher-rated player won the match, and in fact, the higher-rated player won 37 matches to 7 won by the lower-rated player. The prediction from the app, 19% won by the lower-rated player, would suggest 8 by the lower rated player and 36 by the higher rated player. We got 7 and 37. That's pretty close. The other question is, what is the average match score? You can see amongst the winning match scores here, everything from 9 to 0 up to 9 to 8. And even though 9 to 6 is the 50-50 proposition, there's not some weird number of 9 to 6 scores or anything. But if we ask the question, on average, how many games did the lower player win for each 9 won by the upper rated player, the answer is 5.8, which is pretty close to 6. And finally, we noted Jeremy Sose's 9-5 uh, win over James Aranis. Well, it turns out a 9-0 rematch between those two appeared on the other side, making the total score 
Iran is 14, so say 9, pretty much in that 9 to 6 ratio. Fargo rate karma, I suppose.